everyone. This is Becca Kephart with the Ladies of the Chains Disc Golf Podcast. Kim Janola from Team MVP. And I'm Nova 64 Polita of Team Ozone Discs. And we're here on the back nine of round one of the Jonesboro Open with our FPO feature card. We've got Jennifer Allen, Sarah Hokum, Jessica Weiss, and Kona Panis. And the front nine was a bit of a coming out party for Kona Panis. She shot four under, including an eagle on hole nine. Just a beautiful course here in Jonesboro. And we'd like to thank Terry Miller for bringing us this FPO coverage, as well as the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And we'd also like to thank the PDGA. And the Jonesboro Open is the third stop of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And this is just a really great graphic. I love this. Each one of those four slides would make a terrific disc. I want one of each. Following her eagle, Kona Panis has got the tee box 360 feet up towards this elevated basket. And catches the skip and donks right into the canister. That'll be a nice drop in birdie. And that's the one time you want to hear the donk off that canister, too, is off the tee. And this hole sets up really well for a forehand drive or a backhand turnover. So it leaves that one maybe just a little bit short. Jennifer Allen catches a high branch just off the tee pad. She'll have a little bit of work to do to get up and down. Jessica Weiss takes it a little farther out to the left and finds the last branch. She'll be in the same position. Jennifer Allen, a little bit of a turnover on a mid-range. It slides right up to circle one. It'll be a bit of a tester putt. Jessica Weiss, also the mid-range, similar position. All three of those discs right there in a row, and Kona still hasn't had her second shot yet. It's just a fantastic drive from the tee. I'm sure she doesn't mind waiting. That is a loud noise. Sarah Hokum for her birdie. And that high putt works really well on the elevated basket, drops in from above quite nicely. Looks like Jen will have a little bit of a comebacker here. Takes her time lining it up and smashes chains. We all had three birdies on the day for the women and two of them came from the feature card, so they definitely showed us how it was going to be done. And we're moving on to hole 11. Kona moves to five under on the round. Got 560 foot par four, a skinny fairway that then really opens up. Mm -hmm. On this one, uh, the drive really needs to get to the center of the fairway to get a good look at the green. Uh, you get too far to the left and too far, and it can get jammed up. And if you get too far to the right, you'll have trees blocking a good line to the basket as well. And Jennifer Allen just gives that a smash. That's really going to need to hook up and move a little bit to the left. Jessica Weiss, follow suit, also gives it a little bit of a rip. And there's that fade that she was looking for. Our second forehand roller out of the round. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can see how Sarah Hokum got uh, pushed up against those trees on the left-hand side. That forehand roller was really her only option to get out. Spike there by Kona. And this hole sets up really well for a forehand approach. Yeah, it's hard to see, but that was a fantastic result there for Jessica. Mm -hmm. The caddies and gallery were quite stoked. And that's the danger of the approach shot, is if you fade out early, you're going to be in a little bit of jail there in those trees and bushes right by the basket to the right. Sarah almost had that, too. On camera, uh, those trees don't look like much, but in person, they are terrible. There's all manner of uh, sticky and prickly vines in there that will just snag everything. Oh, just a little yeah, low. If you've never played in the Midwest before, 
staying out of the rough is the wisest thing you can do. It is not pretty in there at all. No, no good comes of being in there. And we're going to have just a few cleanups here. Looks like a birdie for Jess. Yep. One of two on the day, her and Madison. And Sarah will take her par, and we are moving on. Kona maintains her lead at four under. And we're on to hole 12, par four, 535 feet. This is another hole where you have to pick what you want to do on your drive if you're going to go for it across OB or lay up and go for it on your second shot. Jessica Weiss uh, laid up nicely there. Sarah Hokum wills that across, and it's just there. You see the relief as she collects her low five. And I can imagine Jennifer Allen will probably be going for it on this one. Of course. If you had her arm, you'd be going for it too. Making sure every detail on the tee pad is properly sorted. That disc Crash. is moving in a hurry. That's just a beautiful flight pattern right there. Getting full flight out of that disc. Great drive. And we'll see if Kona goes for it here as well. It's she like she, she does up. throw far. I think she's lining up that destroyer again. Very similar looking line. Perhaps not quite as far, but also a fantastic result. So Jessica's going to be the only one going over the OB on her second shot, it looks like, here. Sarah Hokum weaving her way up from that first lie, which was pretty close to the far side of the OB. And this hole has a really fast green. It drops off uh, right beyond the basket there, so you do not want to go long on your approach. Lots of opportunity for a roll away. True. You want to make your layup like Jennifer Allen just did there, where you manage the angle that the disc is coming into the ground so that it doesn't tip up and catch an edge because it will roll pretty far. Kona Panis is looking at a death putt here, and that could have skipped a long way off the top of that basket. She's going to be sitting pretty good for the comebacker. Great birdie for Jennifer. Had the farthest drive and converts on the birdie as well. And drills that putt right into center chains. If that had missed, it would still be going. Jessica lining up her par putt and she converts a good clean par. I believe this is Hokum's birdie putt. And, and you'd be right. And she converts another birdie for Sarah Hokum. And Kona Panis is not stoked to be putting for par here. All right, and we're moving on. Kona at four down for the round. Jennifer and Sarah both at one under. Hole 13, 255 feet, plays into a hillside, and it's certainly gettable, but a little tricky. Uh, Sarah Hokum with a backhand up the hill, and this is one where even though you're throwing uphill, you want to throw even more uphill than the hill. Uh, if you uh, don't get it up high enough, you don't get the fade you need, and you end up off to the right-hand side, uh, like that right there. And if you throw too far to the left, you run the risk of hitting the hill, kind of like Jessica did. And Kona Panas uh, coming up fourth. You can see she's playing that line off to the right, and it just needed to be higher in order to skip towards the basket. So she's going to be making a long uphill look. And Sarah Hokum, of course, not really known for her backhand drives, but she gets CTP on this hole with a backhand drive. Do you talk to your discs? Oh, I talk to my discs all the time. I talk to other people's discs, too, with varying results. 
Sometimes they don't like it very much. <laughs> oh, Jessica Weiss, not at all happy to watch that disc bounce off of the basket. It cleans up her bogey. I sometimes talk to my discs before I throw them. Does it work? Sometimes. You have one job. It's <laughs> not to hit that tree. Don't hit that tree. And here's Sarah for her birdie putt. Sometimes my discs talk to me. <laughs> And another birdie for Sarah. She has caught fire here a little bit on the back nine. This is a good hole for the women today. We played just about you know, 15th of a stroke under par. We're moving on to hole 14. 520 foot par four, downhill, a very tricky green, but potentially gettable. You can see that OB area as well. You do want to clear that on your drive or lay up in front of it. And despite being a downhill shot, that window is a lot harder to hit than it looks like. And with the added penalty of OB water uh, sitting right there in front of you, it can add up to a lot of mental pressure. Kona Panis is fading out a bit early and that hits OB. She's going to be on the near side where it was last inbounds. Jessica Weiss. Yeah. With the OB and the trees, you really need to hit a very specific okay. landing zone, otherwise you've got a difficult approach. Jessica Weiss in front of that OB area. Great. Second fades out and it gets into that rough, rough. She's going to have a uh, oh, bit of work Sarah. to do. Oh, Sarah, says Sarah. She is going to have a lot of work to do there. Every single tree in that rough is between her and the basket. Cohen Apanis throwing three from the near side of the OB. And it's a, just on the other side of those rocks or logs from the basket. That's certainly, she'll have a putt from there. Mm -hmm. Good chance to save. See, uh, Jen Allen got off pretty far to the left, playing all the way across the front of the basket and gets off into the right. Sarah Holcomb uh, pitches out. Now, for being a par four where you're looking right at the basket from the tee pad, this play is very hard. It's such a tricky green. It's just right there, but an errant shot one way or another, as you can see there from Jen, it really leaves you with a lot of trouble to get through. Yeah, when, when Jen Allen is taking her medicine, you know it's a hard hole. Yeah. If you don't park the landing zone, then you've got a very difficult approach if you wanted to get the bird. Kona Panis gets a terrific par save. She Try going to the basket from the other side. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, well, and to your point, this is an elevated basket as well. It's on a log and not a canister, but... Little, lots of extra difficulty all around on this hole. Well, it definitely changes the angle and the perception of what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us don't practice on that. And we're moving on after all that. Looks like Kona is still four down. back on hole 15, 270 feet, very gettable. This is pretty much a must bird. Just sitting right there. All you need to do is spike one in and check it up under the basket. The slope of the hillside is going to catch pretty much any drive that comes in on the hyzer. Unlike being on the coasts where you're expected to get a big skip off of hard ground or pine needles or the like, uh, this grass is just going to catch it. Ah. Jessica Weiss uh, doesn't get that hyzer up high enough, and so it doesn't fade over towards the basket. Ooh, very close outside the circle putt there for Sarah Holcomb. Similar look for Jess. 
bullseye. Great putt. She has such a unique Annie style putt, and it really works for her. Yeah. After the last couple of holes, she's got to be stoked to get that birdie in there. And Kona Panos just needed a little more oomph to get up that hill. A lot of birdies on this one today. Oh. I'll take a guess. Becca? Nova? I'm going to go with five. Seven. That's good. Very Seven well. birds, six pars, two bogeys. Well played hole for the field as it should be. That's great. Kona taps in her par and we are moving on to hole 16. Kona maintains at four under. Jennifer Allen and Sarah Hokum both at two under now. 520 foot par four. And this is a shot where you're gonna wanna get a good placement on your drive and try and clear the water on your approach. Yes, at this level, the water's really not going to come into play on the, on the first throw. Let's really start to stretch of three fairly difficult holes that definitely played over par. Kona looks to be not super happy with that drive as she hit a tree. She's going to try to clear the water here on her approach. That's tracking quite nicely. Yep. Great, great throw. Gallery and caddies wanted that to drop in, but the disc wouldn't listen. I think so, she clipped a tree. Yeah, yep. Jessica Weiss, uh, fellow bee on that uh, second throw. That's a safe play there to that uh, little bit of eroded wall. Mm -hmm. Jessica from the drop zone after going OB. And she does clear. Hokum with her birdie look. Just a little off to the right there. Kona coming back for her birdie attempt. And she converts. Really well played hole for Kona. She ran that one down. Oh, tough spit out for Jess. That is rough. After that uh, third throw, missing that putt and getting the double bogey is uh, not at all fun. Number five double bogeys are higher today. You know, one errant approach shot and everything just kind of domino, or not domino, snowballs. Certainly, that's, that's a big area of water to convert, but our feature card played it pretty well here. Two birdies, a par, and a double bogey, and we're moving on to hole 17, par four, 530 feet. Finishes hard right, but also a lot of trouble to the right of the basket on this one. Kona Panis doesn't get as much turnover as she wants on that drive, and that's headed left, and there is OB over there, and the pop-up graphic tells me she's found it. This hole pl plays well for a forehand drive. Hopefully Sarah will have a good look from where she landed. And Jessica utilizing that forehand as well. That looks good. Yeah, I'd said that the... Last three holes played over par, but this one's the exception. You'd be surprised how much under par they play this one. About a full quarter stroke. Well, Kona Pan is playing from her relief at the edge of the OB. And that slides right up to the basket. That's an excellent recovery. Sarah Holcomb asking her disc to sit. Jessica Weiss, not excited to catch that branch on the right-hand side. It's going to leave a little bit of work left to do. It's too well guarded to putt from there. Yeah, it's challenging when you have skeletal woods like that. Some of the branches just blend into the background, and you mm -hmm. can't see them until the disc strikes. Jennifer Allen, not pleased at all with that half-go or layup. It's, you can see it's rolled pretty far down the hill. 
Uh, the hole got very quickly out of control for her. Here's Sarah's putt and another birdie conversion. Sarah Hookham having a very good back nine. Jessica will tap in for her par. And Kona cleaning up her par as well. That's four birdies on the back nine for Sarah Hokum at this point. Shen cleaned up her bogey and we're moving on to the final hole, the front nine. Look at that for Sarah Hokum. Really, really excellent. Very clean. And then she'll take the honors on the last hole, par five, 818 feet. This first shot, you really just want to hit the middle of the fairway right about there and then don't keep skipping like over there. <laughs> yeah, this is a tricky one for sure. There's a lot of ways it can go wrong right off the tee. Mm -hmm. You can see where the preceding card is uh, walking. You want to set yourself up to pretty much throw over their heads. And unfortunately, there is that OB to the left-hand side that Kona has found. Yeah. Holy. Jessica Weiss gets a bit of a turnover. That's headed to the right-hand side. It can be very difficult to play up the hill from over there. Jennifer Allen gets a very big rip, turns over and disappears behind the early trees. We'll have to see where that ended up. Skip, yeah. skip she says, and it does up to the 250-foot marker. Jen Allen's got a tricky play through this grove of trees to get a good look at the green, and it sits just at the left-hand edge of them. Kona Panis taking a little bit of relief from the OB fence. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, it looked like her footing got a little weird. There could be debris near the edge of the course out of fence like that. Sure. I'm a chicken! You <laughs> I think Sarah wanted to put a little more on that than she did. I feel you, Sarah. We've been there. Mm -hmm. The number of times I say chicken to myself is not something I want to recall, but it's usually on a putt, so. I usually proceed it with a profanity. <laughs> Jen Allen fighting her way out from the left-hand edge of that grove of trees. She's left herself with a little bit of work to do, but she's at the green. Yeah, still a good throw from where she was at. She had a lot between her and the basket. And a lot of distance uphill. Mm-hmm. Sarah Hokum not stoked with the result there. Ooh, that forehand turned on Kona more, I think, than she wanted to. We'll have to see what look she has from up there. Yeah, it looked like she was really hoping for a bit more flex. Uh, the angle of release really was going to pull it to the left. It was very vertical. Yeah. It was a challenging position, though, especially from the stance she had to take. And you can see from Kona's body language, it's tough to end around this way when she had just a really, really great round all around yep. up until this hole. Yep. Nobody likes air balling in front of a gallery. But Sarah Hopem converts her birdie. Yeah, despite saying chicken two shots earlier, and yep. finished, finished very strong. Yeah, five down on the back nine. Really great for Sarah Hokum. And did it almost with no effort and no showmanship. Yep, just clean, smart golf. That's what Sarah does. Five very sneaky birdies. Just lining up this putt. Let's see if she can convert. And she does. That's a great way to end your round right there. Yeah, with some of the shakier putts that she'd had early in the round, it's good to go into the clubhouse with a nice putt like that. Here's Kona with her comebacker. And she puts it in the basket to end the round for her. Not the way she wanted that round to end no. after such a strong start. But still a really great overall round for Kona. Definitely seeing signs of what she can do. Jennifer's done with a par on hole 18, and that will do it for round one. Uh, Paige Pierce shot a scorching 12 under 1025 rated round in round one. Madison Walker had a great five under. 
And Sarah and Kat are at four under, and they will be your lead card for round two. Thanks again to Terry Miller, and we'll see you next time.